There's been a fresh round of diplomatic wrangling over Edward Snowden between Russia and the United States. This as the world expected the fugitive whistleblower to leave a Moscow airport earlier this week. The former NSA contractor has been stranded in the transit zone there for a month now, currently waiting for Moscow's decision on his temporary asylum request. RT's Lindsay Franz recaps the twists and turns in the Snowden saga. The world media and U.S. law enforcement may not be chasing Edward Snowden from country to country at this point, but there is plenty of chasing going on at the airport. And there's no sign of it slowing down. As the weeks have passed, the Kremlin has stuck to its guns on allowing Snowden to stay, as long as he does not harm the United States by disclosing any more information. Tension mounted Wednesday when reports emerged that Snowden's Russian advisor, Anatoly Kucherina, was en route to Sheremetyevo Airport's Terminal E with documents allowing Snowden's temporary release from the transit zone, while his asylum bid is considered. But he showed up toting a brown paper bag filled with nothing more than new clothes and a few copies of Russian classics translated to English, along with some rather dismal news for Snowden. The paperwork was delayed. Edward is in waiting mode now, and we can all imagine how he feels, being unaware of what's ahead of him and whether he'll get a yes or no answer from the Russian authorities. And formal procedures can take up to three months. Anyway, he's very grateful to Russia, which didn't abandon him, and to the people who are trying to help him. Needless to say, Snowden was nowhere in sight for the media's hungry lenses. Meanwhile, the game of diplomatic ping-pong gets better and better. While Russia allows Snowden to remain in the transit zone, the White House demands he's returned without delay. The Kremlin returns the volley by pointing out the absence of an extradition treaty with Washington. U.S. Ambassador to Russia then takes to Twitter, claiming they're not asking for extradition, just a return. Russia points out the absence of an international law requiring a return. Secretary of State John Kerry calls Snowden a traitor to his country. Russia states part of the reason for sheltering Snowden is worried that he could face capital punishment. It's then that U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder pens a letter to Russia's Justice Ministry, no torture, no execution. Russia points to the fact that Snowden has been stripped of his passport. He can't travel. To which Holder scrambles to offer a temporary passport for direct travel to the secure embrace of American law enforcement. The Kremlin is unmoved while the White House asks for clarification on Snowden's status. I think Edward Snowden has really been, uh, in many ways, a hero, and he has sacrificed his entire future. I, I think as an American, how much it's clear he loves this country. He will never again see the Golden Gate Bridge or uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains or the Grand Canyon, all the things that we Americans take for granted. Other irons in the fire? Congress accelerated a bill applying sanctions to any country offering asylum to Edward Snowden. And some hawkish senators are calling for everything from a change of venue for September's G20 summit in St. Petersburg to a boycott by the U.S. Olympic team of the 2014 Winter Games in Sochi. Outside the states, there are plenty of people lining up to make sure Snowden's not thrown to the Washington Wolves anytime soon. It's important that people from whatever government can say, I think my government has been doing wrong and has been uh, breaching people's human rights and I need to apply for asylum in order to be able to speak out about it. While all sides battle it out, back and forth, back and forth, where's their query? He's quietly hanging out and duty-free, or possibly thumbing through his new copy of Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment back at Sheremetyevo Airport. In Moscow, Lindsay France, RT.